Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Policy Subcommittee meeting here at the William Arnone Theater on Belmont Street in Brockton. Today is Tuesday, March 5th, and it is 6.30 p.m. Um, I would like to ask everybody to please stand and salute our flag. this time I'd just like to read this into the record this meeting and not only is it held in person but is also being held and accessible to the public by way of Comcast Channel 8 and 1071 HD version online by way of the link www.youtube.com slash the Brockton channels at this time I would like to establish a quorum <coughs> Ms. Sullivan yeah Mr. Chair here Ms. Oliver here yeah. Mr. Rodriguez here yeah. Ms. Azak? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. And I'm here as well. So <coughs> at this time, number four on the agenda is for us to review. The reason we're here is to review the cell phone policy, the finalized version of the cell phone policy. I'd like to thank, before we get started, I'd like to thank Dr. Michelle Connors, who worked with me over the weekend, last weekend, to pull this together so that we could get a final version for us to actually decide on and move on. So I'm going to call Dr. Connors up to be able to walk us through the versions that are in front of us so we can make a final decision and then move forward. Dr. Connors, and thank you again. I always hate to be the first one. Is this on? <laughs> okay. Um, so the first, I tried to label them. If I had my way, they would have been color coded. Um, I didn't. We're, you know, the budget deficit. I don't have colored paper right now. Kidding. Too soon. All right. So the first copy, draft one. You received that in hard copy, um, let me say, a month or so ago um, when we had a meeting at the Little Theater. So that was the original. Dr. Cobbs had given the cabinet and the leadership team at Brockton High a draft to start with for the policy that included secure pouches. And so with Cabinet and Brockton High School leadership team under Principal McCaskill's leadership, they gave feedback. So that's what you see captured in draft one. As we know, we've talked about it here at the committee, teacher voice is beyond critical in this process because they are with the students in the classrooms and the hallways and there are more of them than there are leaders. So draft two takes what was in draft one, it's the second stapled packet, and you'll notice some changes, some things that are crossed out, some additional words in red that have been added, and some items that have been highlighted in yellow. That represents faculty feedback. So while I'm talking about that, if you will grab that fourth packet of handouts, the last packet, it says notable feedback to consider. On Thursday, February 29th, Principal McCaskill had a full faculty meeting with the Brockton High faculty and shared draft one with them. They, had, they were able to have some dialogue and then a Microsoft form link was provided to the faculty and they were given until Friday at 3 p.m. to submit their feedback. This last document captures their feedback. I tried to categorize it um, with common themes so that you could see exactly what their words are because their words are incredibly important in this process as I mentioned. We received 88 responses. It was overwhelmingly positive. The questions they asked need to be considered as we go forward with implementation. Understanding that implementation happens in the school, not, at, not here at the committee, but it does impact the policy. So I took that feedback and incorporated it into draft two so you could see where they wanted the changes made and what their suggestions were on rewording. I'll give a, four, a very easy for example. At the bottom of the first page, the last bullet, on the initial document, it stated that after school detention would be from two to four that day. Two problems there. We have some contractual considerations we have to keep in mind. We also, more importantly, have to consider our families. So if my daughter is at school and gets caught with a cell phone that day and is told she has to stay that day, that could cause a lot of problems for our families, transportation, other activities that they're involved in, their own childcare if they take care of younger siblings. So it's very important to the, to the family or to the faculty that our families are represented in this as well, saying 
our handbooks do say 24-hour notice for any after-school detention. So we work to build that in as well. Um, so that's just a just a quick, easy way to show just the the, the deep thoughts that our Brockton High faculty put into this work um, because they know how important it is. The final copy or the third doc, the third set of documents you receive is it says preview across the front. <clears throat> that represents all of the feedback that's incorporated. I just I took out the colors, the crossouts, and just made it a very clean copy that's easier to read it in its entirety. And that's where it stands based on after the faculty feedback. Dr. Connors, just a couple of questions. Um, so outside of municipal politics, I love the notable feedback. Um, there's a thing called a decision log. And this is basically capturing the decision log of how we got to the point that, which I, I love this, because this shows why we made the decisions that we made. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, the final copy we have today doesn't have to be the final, final. We, I look at it, and I, I don't know about everybody else, but we roll this out, we work out the kinks, see what happens with faculty and everyone. If, if it's working, great. If it's not, then we evolve and we adjust again. But I think this gives us something to work with. And more importantly, it has the voice of the faculty in it, which was very important to this committee. Um, and so I'm going to open up the I'm going to open up questions to anybody that have any in regards to either one of these versions. Oh, I do have one last question. What? What would you say was probably, you said it was very positive, what would you say was probably one, of, one or two things predominantly that faculty were concerned about so that we should be aware? I think there's, there's definitely more than two. Um, the first and foremost is adherence to consequences. Um, that came through loud and clear and if we are saying these are the consequences, we all have to be prepared. Um, to enforce it and to follow them and, and con you know, the issuance of consequences is, is incumbent upon leadership. That was loud and clear. There's a lot of what-if questions which are understandable and I saw this when I was visiting a middle school today. Um, our laptops, they, you've heard, um, you know, they're, they're aging out, they need to be refurbished and they're not, um, some of them are not as reliable so students do go on their phones to use their phones. I did see it um, in an English class today, very resourceful young man with teacher permission. Um, so there's that what if, are students still going to be allowed? So I think there has to be that conversation about teacher discretion for an academic purpose. And, and that, but there were also some comments like, well, they say it's for academics, but is it really? So it comes down to how are we as leaders supporting our teachers in this process because they're on the front lines. The other um, big issue that um, was came through loud and clear is who is locking and unlocking? Some of the consequences talk about um, if the student is in the hallway, I may not be a student of mine, there's over 3,700 students there, and I say, put your, please put your phone away, and they refuse, and I don't know who the student is, or um, they say, well, I can't because my pouch is locked, and a teacher doesn't have a magnet. So these are some of those logistical things we have to work out together and get a feel for it. I always say, you gotta try it on for size, and wiggle around in it a little bit and see what's working, what's not, and continually revisit for that feedback. Thank you. Any questions from the group? Okay. Oh, Ms. Oliver. Um, a quick question about the headphones. I know the pouch will fit the cell phones and the earbuds. What about the headphones? That was a big question. That came through a lot. And so what, we, what I tried to do is incorporate in here um, about headphones that they need to be stored in a school bag or a backpack but that also came up in the feedback because teachers gave that suggestion also there are many students who don't carry bags and so we do have to talk through as a team at Brockton High what is next because I understand a worry if I give it over to the office and uh, where are they securing it so some of those logistical pieces because I think when I'm up there I I feel like I see more headphones than I do earbuds. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do have to talk that through and that was a question among the faculty. Yeah, because I did notice a lot of them um, this morning. Yes. And they are very large. Yes. So we need to figure out where we're putting them and how we're gonna um, 
basically figure that out soon. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, Dr. Connors, I was looking at the, the preview. Mm -hmm. And the. It's on, it's on, I can, yeah. It's on. Hello? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about the smart watches. I, it was crossed off the first two, and it's it's not on the third one. Uh, there was a lot of questions in the feedback about why smart watches. Um, they don't have the capabilities that are as distracting as the cell phones in terms of recording. Um, a lot of a lot of faculty wear them. A lot of students do wear them. I'm addicted to my own just because it keeps me <laughs> on my toes. No pun intended. Um, and so it just it's. Through the feedback, it didn't seem to be a concern. Smartwatches are not a concern, um, except in a testing environment. Our DESI MCAS guidelines do say no smartwatches for testing because there's calculator capabilities. It's not about, it doesn't rise to the realm of looking something up on the internet or recording. So it's not part of the faculty, from what I gathered from their feedback, did not see smartwatches as the issue. It just I don't have a smart watch myself, but the wife does, and she gets phone calls into the... Yes. I don't know how it works, but she knows that the phone is ringing by that smart yes. watch. Yes. Um, so ideally, the phone would be powered off and put in the pouch, but if it's not powered off and then the battery's going to drain, it is, a mag it is a locked pouch. So yes, it could ring, but we're, if we start to get into these kind of one-offs, then we're going to drive ourselves crazy. So I think it kind of goes back to the let's see what happens if smart watches do pre present an, a problem then we need to revisit that piece of it okay but I, I have not heard um, issues with smart watches all right thank you Ms. Sullivan thank you dr. Connors um, so who's gonna go over this with the students like the policy and the consequences and the offenses and everything that's it that's the parents so um, that's where, you know, it, at our level of leadership, we work in a role to support and talk through some systems and structures that we may think are best with the leadership team. But ultimately, that's a decision of the leadership team on how they implement it. We will, of course, recommend, and I'm sure I don't even have to recommend this to Principal, Principal McCaskill and his team, to have those assemblies and those forums, um, you know, the world according to Michelle Connors. I wouldn't do the entire freshman class. Um, in an auditorium because that's a large group, but give opportunities for maybe some smaller settings so the, the students can ask questions. Um, their voice is why we do this work. So um, the implementation piece we need to leave to leadership um, and ensure that it's done well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to just let the record show that um, committee member Claudio Gomes has joined us. Welcome. And Ms. Azak. Thank you, Dr. Connors. I just have a question. So the third offense, the phones mm -hmm. are going to go to the main office. Um, how are we going to secure them? These phones are expensive, and we shouldn't be responsible if anything happens to them. Um, so are we going to have some kind of a safe? How are we going to secure them so we can make sure that the students get back their phones um, when a caregiver or a parent picks them up? Absolutely. And so it says main office, and I believe we adjusted it to say or house office, um, depending. All of those locations do have safes that are um, locked or closed, and there's always an adult there. But things do happen. And so, th again, we have to talk through, though the devil is in the details. We do have to talk through what that means and what that looks like because we've had those instances where a phone is confiscated and something happens. And understandably, the family is incredibly upset. So we have to talk through that. Um, one quest quick question is, when we were talking to Principal McCaskill last week, he made a really good point about pacing all the transitions. So was that part of your conversation with faculty in terms of when to roll out, how to roll out? I mean, w originally when we were trying to push this through, we were thinking at the end of February vacation, we were going to try to roll it out. Is that something that's realistic for April vacation so we can, I I'm just, I'm throwing that out there for conversation to see <laughs> if it's even feasible or are these continued conversations with administration that should be happening before we actually get to that point? I think the, the first step is obviously approval of a policy because then that gives you something to now work with 
And then once the, the committee, um, if, if you so vote to approve this policy, then Principal McCaskill brings it to his team and then they start talking about what does this look like and the faculty, what does it mean for them? What are they comfortable with? Everything, everywhere, all at once is not going to work. Um, and you set up very um, adversarial conditions between adults and students and we don't want that. So I think it needs to be very deliberate. You go slow to go fast. Um, so that, that's, my, that's my thinking. Fair enough. Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Um, how are we gonna handle our uh, older student populations, the 18 and 19 year olds when it comes to parent notification? Because they are adults when it comes to getting their phones. I'm 18 yeah, we, years old, I'm, it's my phone, you're not taking it away from me. I, they're still a student, but. They're still a student, and we would. but, you know, as far as making that call home, you're not calling my parents, I'm an adult. So students can um, legally be in our schools until 22. Um, so they are still adults, um, but they are under our care um, in loco parent, parentis. So we still, we will communicate with parents. We will still, those consequences are the consequences. Um, we deal with this with field trip permission slips because at 18 they can sign them. That yep. doesn't mean we don't communicate with, with their families. And so that, that's still, the fact that they're 18, they're still a student enrolled in Brockton Public Schools and it's a Brockton Public School policy. All right, thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Connors. I mm -hmm. really applaud you for getting feedback from, from the teachers and the staff. It's extremely Absolutely. important. Um, my question is to Dr. Cobbs. When we were here last week, we were talking about doing a pilot program. It's going to be about a thousand of the yonder pouches, uh, about forty dollars per. Uh, is there an update on that? Yes, there is. Um, since uh, the last time we met, I worked with the representatives again, and they decided to give us a work with us and give us a discount on the pouches instead of forty dollars or thirty dollars. Um, and realizing that we had a cap at one hundred thousand dollars, so what we what we did was instead of four thousand, we'll buy thirty seven hundred. So that puts us just under the cap at ninety nine thousand six hundred and eighty dollars. So we can buy them all at once to without, imp without full, procurement. exactly fully imp implement the program without having to go to procurement and, and get started. Thank you. If I may, I just noticed one piece I wanted to point out. There is still some red in your preview copy. I did that purposefully just to call your attention to the fact we did have attorney Paige Tobin look this over. Mm -hmm. um, she looks over all of our, our handbooks and supports us in that work. So the, the items in red were for me to call out, or they, if they're still in, I'm not sure if they're in red for you. So the bottom of page two is underlined, there's a line, the last line is underlined on page two. Is it still underlined on yours? Yeah. Okay. All right, then, then we fixed it. So anyway, attorney Paige Tobin did look this over and gave her feedback. <laughs> and if you want to see my copy, it's here in red. Um, so that we, I can certainly do that. So at the bottom of page two, the last line that states, any suggestions will follow due process procedures consistent with the student code of conduct in state law. Those, that is her addition. On page three, the second bullet, um, again, the, the, Third and fourth words, it's the students will receive disciplinary consequences. And then again, the last line, which is a repetition of the line on page two, is the legal language. And the third bullet, receive disciplinary consequences, including. And then the last line, any suspension will follow due process procedures consistent with the student code of conduct and state law. So this has been vetted by the attorney as well. Mr. Rodriguez. One last question. Did we get any data on actually how many students actually have cell phones? Because not every student has a phone. Not every student can afford a cell phone. I would like to know exact, I mean, if there's a possibility if we can get an actual number. I know. How do you do that? Um, we do you own a phone? Yeah, yes everybody or no? owns a phone. You can. Um, and we're also, you know, we've started part of the feedback that I did include in this draft because it's not necessarily germane to policy but that students are already talking that they know this is coming. And there's already been talk about, I'll just bring an old phone mm -hmm. so they can see me put it in a pouch. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so asking the them, um, we can certainly, we can collect that data, I just don't know the validity of that data. Right. Exactly. I mean, when we visited Springfield, that was one of their biggest things. The, the object of this is making sure that they have that phone away. There was That's kids right. with two phones, three phones, it's, it's just so that we don't 
see right. those phones exactly being able right. to buy. And, and I think what you'll find, our students, as we know, are amazing. I think that you'll find they don't want to put it in a pouch that's locked, but they'll say, I'll put it away. If I know the consequence is you're, I have to lock it in a pouch and it's controlled, I, let me just put it away. You won't see it, I promise. And if you do see it, you're right. I have to put it in a, in a locked pouch. I think that's really um, what you'll, you'll probably start to see with our students is that those pouches become the consequence as opposed to the, reali the, the reality. But again, I think that's going to depend on what rollout looks like initially. And, and to um, Vice Chair Ehlers' point, the adjusting based on feedback from faculty and how it's going. And, and with, with that as well, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, the, the, the ones that do keep the phones in, but if they're using them, it's going to be the standout. It's going to be the one or two mm -hmm. in the class, not everybody. So it'll be pretty obvious. Right. Any other questions in regards to Mr. Sullivan? Just one quick one. On page one, the, uh, if the pouch has to be replaced, it's $40. $40, yes. He just, he's getting Look, actually, 30. we need to change that to thirty dollars. Okay, I can I can do that. Thirty. Thirty dollars. Yes. Miss Azak. What happens if they don't have the thirty dollars? Do we give them some kind of detention? Um, not every student can afford thirty dollars. Right. But it, I can speak to one, that. One, so it will go in the infinite campus. We have yeah. a fees tab in the infinite campus. It will go in there. So when it's time for, we, we can we can track it just like we do with books. And, and later, you're going to vote on this laptop policy. It'll be the same thing. And so that's what we traditionally, with textbooks back in the in the day, um, there were textbook obligations for seniors. It was incredible. It was really a bigger deal. Juniors possibly with prom tickets, but. Prom doesn't happen close enough to the end of the year. But with senior and graduation tickets in prom, it was like you have to pay your obligations in order to attend those. I think that's another conversation on what does that look like um, to repay, if you will. It doesn't necessarily isn't monetary. Um, and I would, you know, I can imagine people say, well, if they have a phone, they can afford it. That's an assumption I don't think we should be making at all about about anything so i think we have to be cognizant of it may not be monetary and what are we prepared to do um, to support that payoff community service right in the school mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I agree not every student i know it's a small amount for some but not every student right. has that extra thirty dollars um, over time like we do at edison academy for tuition we can make payment schedules mm -hmm. with, with the student or the parent so, oh, I apologize. So, Dr. Cobbs, it's three thousand at thirty dollars. Three thousand seven hundred. So, three thousand seven hundred brings us over the ninety thousand. It's one eleven. At thirty dollars each. Yep. Yeah, we'll so we're fine. We don't have yep. to. Right. Okay. Because I know originally it's, it's, it's under the hundred thousand. It's nine thousand. I have the purchase order here once again. Nine thousand six hundred eighty dollars. <laughs> Well, the purchase order is for nine thousand, so, so it's so. Yeah, I should hope so. Math wasn't my yeah. my, my strong okay. strong. Uh, it's one hundred eleven thousand. Yeah. So yeah. maybe do the. So thirty seven hundred to thirty dollars. Yeah, so we don't have to revote. But then the they just counted it again. Uh, the thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. This is. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. So basically how it mapped out, you're right, Ms. Azak. It's, yeah, it right. comes to 37 quantity at a rate of $30 each for $111,000 with a $13,320 discount to bring us down to $99,680 for all 3,700 units. With the 2,000 shipping charge. Yep, and that also includes a 2,000 shipping charge, but it's still beneath the $100,000 procurement. Yeah, that thank you. Yeah. Good catch. <laughs> that's, that's not my You story. get a start tonight. Okay, any other questions in regards to the verbiage in the policy? At this time, do we want to entertain a vote? I would entertain a vote. Motion to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this policy. <laughs> So a full motion. 
read the motion, full motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve this, was it the student phone policy mm -hmm. and discipline procedures? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, the $30 versus the $40? Yeah, as amended. Uh, uh, yes. As amended, and then it would be a, a board of the subcommittee favorable back to the full committee. Which mm -hmm. Correct. So, Correct. As amended. Yes. as amended $30? Correct. No, okay, mm -hmm. second. Now, can I get, I'm gonna do a roll call vote for this one. Ms. Sullivan? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Chair, Mr. Gomes? Yes. Ms. Al Ms. Yes. Oliver? Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Hallelujah. It passes. <laughs> okay, so um, I, the uh, last order of business is any other business? Do we have any other business for policy? Okay, then at this time, in light of the, of the time, I would entertain a motion, motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. Second. Okay, Ms. Sullivan, properly seconded by Ms. Azak. I'm gonna do a roll call vote. Ms. Sullivan? Yes. Ms. Yes. Ms. Chair, Mr. Gomes? Yes. Ms. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This meeting's officially adjourned. Thank you so much. All right, good job.